of the world's largest covered wagon by Guinness Book of World Records featuring Abraham Lincoln. And like many of these roadside attractions along Route 66, they have a nice placard here that talks about the rail splitter covered wagon. It was moved here permanently in 2009, but was built in 2001. Moved to a few places along the way before its current resting spot here. Greetings, friends. Welcome back to Mike Allen from Chicagoland. Currently broadcasting from the town that Abraham Lincoln is named after, that is Lincoln, Illinois, on my way to our state's capital in Springfield. But I thought I would stop here and just profile the world's largest covered wagon featuring uh, Abraham Lincoln. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna get back in the car and head to Springfield. So please come and join me and let's get started. And something Honest Abe was always known for, that was reading books. It was all self-taught. His stepmom had a whole assortment of books that he read as a kid and that was how he got his education. And there's where it says it was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm heading down to Springfield, Illinois the land of Lincoln, and heading into the Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum, which is right smack dab in the middle of uh, downtown. So looking forward to going there. I visited several places in Springfield, but never the library and museum. So come and join me as I head back on the road and head down to Springfield. Made it to Springfield now and about to head into that building over there, the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum. one of the most visited presidential libraries in the country. Can't wait to see what it has to offer. Abraham Lincoln with his wife, Mary Todd. This is their son, William and Tad. They both died in childhood. And Robert Todd Lincoln was the only one of Abraham Lincoln's kids to make it to adulthood. There's some likenesses of Generals McClellan and General Grant. I've seen General Grant portrayed in movies and documentaries so much. That looks like a very accurate portrayal. There's the author and abolitionist Frederick Douglass. Here's Mary Todd Lincoln. It says on the sign that the Lincolns were the first couple to hold the presidency that were born outside the original 13 colonies. And many of the Washington elites resented them for that. And this picture portrays the start of the Civil War when Fort Sumter was bombed by the rebel troops from the south. So this room showcases a bunch of newspaper cartoons portraying Lincoln in very unflattering ways. He was not very popular at the beginning of the war. I'd say Abraham Lincoln had the last laugh. He's remembered in history far more positively than he was in the early days of his presidency. This is Mary Todd attending to her son, William. And there's the president clutching William's favorite doll. There's a portrait of William Lincoln. Some information about his son died two weeks after the presidential ball. This is Lincoln mourning her son. 
portrayal of what the White House kitchen looked like at the time of Abraham Lincoln. This is Lincoln in a cabinet meeting discussing the Emancipation Proclamation. And there's Secretary of State William Seward, who counseled Lincoln to wait until a Union Army victory before announcing the Emancipation Proclamation, of which President Lincoln followed his advice and did so. Lincoln signing the Emancipation Proclamation on September 22nd, 1862, it became effect January 1st, 1863. This section is called the War Gallery, and right away I spotted this picture of Robert E. Lee. There's a bust of Lincoln's hands and face from 1860. In 1865, I saw something very similar to this at the Chicago History Museum a few weeks back, right next to his deathbed. This here shows President Lincoln aging over the years of his presidency, showcasing the stress he was under. Just got older and older and older. In every picture looks like he aged 20 years instead of five. This here is said to be an axe that Abraham Lincoln used to chop a few pieces of wood in Richmond after the city fell to the Union Army. Painting of his second inaugural address. Here's Lincoln learning of his re-election in November of 1864. Here's Lincoln speaking the Gettysburg Address four months after the battle took place. Itself. This looks to be Pickett's Charge, which occurred on the third day. And a celebration of the Union Army's victory here in front of the Capitol building. It's John Wilkes Booth. And Booth sneaking in uh, to assassinate the president at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. You know, if you look on YouTube, you can find a video of an old uh, TV show called I Have a Secret. Uh, it was broadcast in the 50s sometime, and the last surviving witness to Abraham Lincoln's assassination was on the show, and the uh, guest panelists had to figure out what his secret was, and sure enough, that was it. It was the fact that he was the last surviving person to witness the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. A portrayal of Abraham Lincoln when he lied in state. Here was a portrayal of his casket in front of a portrait of George Washington. Here's a picture of Lincoln's tomb right here in Springfield, Illinois, just about probably five minutes down the street from where I'm currently at right now. Inside the artifacts room now, and this is the contract that the Lincolns signed to purchase their home here in Springfield in 1844, along with a piece of wood, original piece of the wood from their house here in Springfield. So when Abraham Lincoln was in Congress, he rented his home to a man by the name of Cornelius Ludlum brick contractor from Jacksonville, Illinois for $90 per year. And right there's the contract and that's sitting next to Mary Lincoln's candlestick holder. There's a doorknob, key, and door plate from the Lincoln home. This is Mary Lincoln's wedding skirt. This plaster of President Lincoln used to be in the state capital, the old state capital in Springfield. 
moved here when the museum was built. So this section of the museum talks about Abraham Lincoln's early years growing up in Kentucky and then Indiana. It's a replica of a cabin he lived in. We're gonna head inside and check it out. Abraham Lincoln as a boy, with his trusty book in his hand. Cabin in Kentucky. Portrayal of Abraham Lincoln inside the New Salem settlement that he helped develop, which is located just north of here. And his first love, Mary Owens, who rejected his marriage proposal. Here's the Lincolns at their home in Springfield. This is a recreation of one of Lincoln's early law offices. His kids playing here on the table. There's Abraham Lincoln's writing on this piece of paper here. Records of a May 1834 election for sheriff in New Salem. There's a recreation of the famous Stephen Douglas and Abraham Lincoln debates. Looks like this takes place in front of Knox College, which is located in Galesburg, Illinois. And this is a portrayal of Lincoln giving his farewell speech to the people of Springfield before embarking on his trip to Washington to start his presidency. This is the last time he would ever be in Springfield. Inside the gift shop now, and Abraham Lincoln, quote, those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves. Also on sale are busts of the president and a hat featuring his hat. You can also purchase one of Lincoln's trademark hats, as well as some Union Army gear. One of the placards here in the museum said that more books have been written about Abraham Lincoln, except for maybe Jesus Christ. More Lincoln hats and feather pens with ink bottle. And they also have copies of the Daniel Day-Lewis version of the Abraham Lincoln movie. Walked across the street real quick to come check out the presidential library. This is an actual research library, but they do have a few exhibits on hand. The security guard was telling me about a few that we could check out here in this rotunda area. So let's do that. So this exhibit here talks about Lincoln's life and letters, starting with his childhood and his love of learning in the 1820s. Yeah, I can't get enough of the time he spent in New Salem, Illinois. After he arrived in 1831, worked several jobs. He was a store clerk, surveyor, and postmaster. Said his first major step towards leadership came when he volunteered to fight in the 1832 Black Hawk War. There's an artist rendering of Lincoln as a surveyor in New Salem. It's a picture of Illinois Senator Stephen Douglas, whom Abraham Lincoln debated throughout 1858 to try to unseat the Illinois Senator. Here's some of his notes before one of those debates. It's a portrayal of Lincoln telling his cabinet the decision to emancipate the slaves which we saw earlier in the museum. And a copy of the Gettysburg Address. And this was a letter from Mary Todd Lincoln urging the governor of Illinois, Richard Oglesby, to move the body of Abraham Lincoln to Springfield and not have it placed in any of the major cities, but rather Springfield's Oak Ridge Cemetery. And Mary Todd Lincoln eventually succeeded in doing that. Yeah, you know, witnessing the death of her husband right in front of her, as well as losing two of her sons in childhood. You know, Mary Todd Lincoln was quite distraught, and it was a burden she carried with her the rest of her life. And in the previous video, I actually uh, went and looked into the insane asylum that she stayed at in Batavia. Uh, the building's now apartments, but uh, they don't allow tours anymore. But there is a museum up in Batavia that does portray her stay in the town and in the insane asylum. So it's definitely worth checking out if you're ever in that area.
So this is a smaller replica of a statue of Lincoln that stands seven feet tall in Beijing, China. Kind of portrays Lincoln in leading a military group. Now he never led troops, but the purpose of the statue was to show his might as a president. And the library section also has a lot of these old depictions of Abraham Lincoln that various artists have crafted over the years. So I really appreciate you joining me today at the Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum here in Springfield, Illinois. You know, I studied Abraham Lincoln quite a bit as a kid growing up here in Illinois and then as an adult just watching programs and reading books and seeing shows on the History Channel about uh, his life and times and how he, you know, came up through New Salem, then through, you know, Springfield and onto the White House. And it was just really cool to see see it all, you know, portrayed here in the museum. Something that I uh, have to come back down here and bring my family to someday. So anyway, if you just wouldn't mind uh, hitting that like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. You can also help me in other ways. I'll put links down in the description below. Actually, just got my first uh, Patreon donation the other day, so appreciate that, and hopefully uh, more will follow. Anyways, this is Mike Ellen from Chicagoland, signing off from Springfield, Illinois. I'll be back next week with another video, but until then, don't you go changing. And one more thing, I just wanted to show a statue of Abraham Lincoln giving his uh, speech during his first inaugural address on March 4th, 1861 in Washington.